Jennifer. What's up? Hey, how are you? Good. Hi, Eric. Are you around? Oh, yes. He's here. He's hey. like raring to go today. He always is. Hey, is that a different background from the last ones? Uh, it, I think that, I, I think it's different. La the last time it was this background, but yeah. It's just oh, okay. Totally new. Okay. Yeah. It looks a little different. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, we are going to talk about a very uplifting um, uh, thing today, and that's going to be demons and possessions. What do you think, Eric? You okay with that? Yes. Yep. Yes, okay. he is. We're not going to have one come into channel, though, so don't worry. No, no. Me. No, he said no, no. <laughs> no. No, we're going to leave them where they are. Uh, actually, this is uh, all these are pretty much from, uh, there are some from other blog members, but the majority of these are for one blog member in per, uh, particular, Martinia. Okay, let me read. Dear Dr. Matthews, please find below questions for the interview. If I suggest it would be useful to bring Annalise Michael to the interview as she died while being possessed by six demons in 1975 in Germany. I don't know if I want to do that. No, Eric is says no. We don't. We don't need to bring them. We don't need okay. to do that in order to get answers. Okay, good. There's a documentary about her on on YouTube uh, for any of you guys who are interested. So that's good. So obviously it's up to you guys. All right. So her, her first question is why uh, demons have? Uh, why do they get the ability to possess the human body? Okay. So. What Eric is saying is is that actually true possessions are very, very rare. Mm. Uh, sometimes it's oddly enough, he says sometimes it's actually written in to the chart that, that there will be a possession, uh, but they're, they're very rare. And the person who ends up uh, kind of being possessed there, um, he says they tend to have some real struggles here. Um, like they kind of, uh, they, they're not real grounded. He said they're not real grounded to being here. Mm -hmm. um, but he says that is very rare. It does happen, he said, but it is rare that you actually get possessed um, by a demon. So they get attracted um, and, by, do, do they get attracted by negative energy, like alcohol, yes. alcoholism, yes. depression, all that kind of yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, there has to be, what, what Eric is saying is like there has to be an entryway for them mm -hmm. to be able to do this. And yes, it's um, like uh, maybe like you were saying, like with the addiction, um, <sighs> sometimes he says also dabbling in that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, can open that gateway too for people. Yeah. Um, and, and he says sometimes it's written in, sometimes it is going to happen. What do you um, mean it's written in like the Like written stuff. into the chart, like the person wrote it in. That like something a spiritual like, contract? Mm -hmm. Oh, why would they yeah. do that? Well, he's saying like that because the people, other people who are here, like need to see it, that there, that there is good and evil. Um, good and evil um and so he is i he is saying you know when you open yourselves to the darker side of things you are inviting that energy in okay um so not even just the possession but the negative entities the lower <coughs> level bless you, um, Thank you the lower level energies you're you're opening up a gateway for that so you need to be really re very careful if you're if you're toying around with that kind of stuff Okay, well, let's talk about the different types. There's demons. Some people talk about shadow entities. I mean, shadow people. Some people talk about negative entities. Can you go over the different? Yeah, so. Negative, uh, uh, darker entities. Yeah. The first thing that he's um, bringing to my attention is that sometimes, because of the way our human brain works, sometimes, and he says actually oftentimes, we will see something here in hum in our human form. You know, you open your eyes at night and there's a figure standing in your room, which this is kind of like the shadow, the shadow people. Um, this is, he's, he's making me feel like this is like the shadow people. Now, the thing is, is that he's saying it usually scares the shit out of people. No so they, kidding. They think it's negative because it scared them. Because uh. it created fear, there's an association that is negative entity and he says that is not always the case 
Are they just um, spirits or shadow yeah, people? Yeah, just spirits or spirit guides. Um, but he says when you see something like that and it scares you, the way the human brain works is it makes it a negative thing. Oh, it's a yeah. negative entity that's attached itself to me. He says that's not the case. And he says oft, oftentimes, not all the time, when you wake up in the night um, and you see somebody standing in the room who shouldn't be there, uh, it's either a loved one or a spirit guide. Oh, okay. Um, and, and so he says, don't, you don't need to be afraid of those, but that's, so there's a disconnect there with seeing sometimes what's a loved one or a spirit guide with it being negative because it creates yeah. fear. Sure. Um, so what other things are there? Okay. So there are like lower level, um, energies like that would have been human form like the same type of soul that we are um that just maybe aren't advanced or he's like they're they, they get stuck in between here and there oh, okay. um and, and so they can they feel he's like they're draining you like they they feel like they want something from you they exhaust you they uh he's saying that that's like how they how they will make you feel um and again frightening you and then the the truly evil like like what we would call demons um those are not like the same type of soul that that humans are he said like oh. angels are not the same type of soul as oh. humans demons are also not the same type of soul different beings he said different beings um and, well, why, and why did they well first let me go back to the people who are stuck why are they stuck and what are they trying to why are they trying uh, to drain something from you so there's all kinds of reasons and it's not even I for for whatever reason he's making me feel as though this particular thing that we're discussing is different than earthbound spirits, different than a ghost, okay, yeah. so to speak. It's like kind of like stuck in between, mm -hmm. like earthbound. They're kind of stuck here. Um, yeah. This is like an in between. Uh, I guess purgatory is what is, is the word that he's giving me. Okay. Um, and and it's like um, they don't want to let go. Like the earthbound spirits oftentimes don't know that they're dead. Um, Whoa, they, wow. they're, they're stuck here because they don't know they've died. Yeah. Um, these spirits, they, they know that they're dead, but they don't want to let go of, of what's here, whether it's their, he said possessions, um, okay. possessions, but he means things, objects. Yeah. <laughs> this, oh, this time, yeah. But, yeah. So he says, um, they don't want to let go. So they, they stick around and, um, they they do have the ability he says to kind of like um like when people feel as though somebody's attached themselves mm -hmm. an energy has attached themselves to you he said this is most often what's happening is it's with these particular souls and and they'll, they'll feel like they've attached like if you go someplace and you come back and i know people out there know know this feeling like something's attached itself to me it's it, it's gotten on me mm. um and that's this type of energy well, why um, do they attach? Where do they get out of that? He says, he says they're trying to use your energy. They're oh. Use your energy um, to get what they want or to, to, have, uh, to have more strength. Um, and he, he said they need to be pushed. They need to be pushed on, into the other side. They need to be pushed over there. Um, and he, okay. So he just said sometimes too, those ones, when they've done something very bad here, they're afraid to go over. Oh. They're afraid to fully go over. So they kind of like cling on, like they fight going into the light, so to speak, yeah. um, because they're afraid of what they're going to have to uh, do when they get there. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, poor guys or girls. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, so tell me more about demons. Where do they come from and why do they exist? Uh, well, he just says, you know, because with, you have to have the good and the evil, the, the oh, balance. The contrast. Um, the contrast um so they also uh, come from you know the same source that we come from Isn't basically that amazing? yeah that we all kind of come from the same place but their their role is to be the evil so that to balance the good um fortunately he said there's a lot more good a lot more good oh, yeah so, um, so basically i mean they're still part of god which is light which is love it's just the darker end of the light spectrum right yeah 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 it's like from one end to the other for you know from one end to the other because um well he puts it in a way like uh, god could like there's really no match for god do, do you know oh, what yeah, I'm yeah. The, the do, that god could just reabsorb them back into the light yeah um but it, in the meantime we need the balance 
Oh yeah. It, All right. It's, it's but still, uh, everything, God is everything. So they are actually yeah. part of God, which is so weird, but I'm sure source has plan her or his reasons but because of the contrast. <laughs> All right. Now can only demons or negative entities or whatever possess or can like somebody, a good spirit possess a human? Well, okay. Yeah. So uh, he's, Eric is funny because he's like, possess is always associated with the negative. So oh. the word possess would always be associated with the negative. Unless you're trans channeling um, but, Eric, for example. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So it's like kind of when somebody says you're possessed, if somebody says you're possessed, people would automatically associate that with the negative is what he's saying. So he, he wants to clarify that, yes, you can, a good or, a, you know, a lighter energy can attach itself to you, which is still technically a possession. But to use that word, he said, people will think it's negative. Yeah, like, what possessed you to do that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, it has I such a negative no, connotation. I understand that saying now. Okay, so yeah. uh, her next question, what do they gain by position? By possession of humans and okay energy is one thing you know yeah so and what what eric just said too is that um uh, they they also gain more access to the physical world um to the to the feelings of the physical world mm. to, to you know just everything about the physical world because when we are on the other side there is that disconnect from the physical world, the emotions yeah. of the physical world, the feeling of the physical world. Um, so some of them really, truly love the physical world. The, um, the power that they had here, the control that they perceived that they had here. Um, so kind of possessing a, a human gives yeah. them those feelings back. Okay. Uh, okay, Russ and Elise and Michael, or Michelle, whatever, Re really possessed by six demons or was she just mentally ill like her doctor argued? Okay, so how Eric is, is putting this is that um, I, he can't say six for sure. He's like, he, he's kind of making me feel like that's kind of an, an obscure like way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, because, and he says, because like uh, it's like they can make you make you look different they can look different they can like one particular possession can look many different ways well you can make the, it can change it can change the face and everything of a person yeah and and Ooh. and they themselves like the personalities that they display so it may have looked like there were six different things but that's not quite adding up for me oh. um he, he's like this is just not quite what was happening um now there was with this particular woman, there was some mental illness. Um, and it's like, um, her, her, her fear and, and her uh, vulnerability is what caught That like, was a portal. That was a yes. portal. Yes. So, the vulnerability. Mentally Ill, so mentally ill uh, people, uh, tend to be victims of possession. Not, sometimes okay. not all yes not always that um how eric is putting it is it can be a way for them to get in um but he says the way it is now uh, mental illness is so much better understood that a lot more people do get help yeah. for it um but it can it can be a vulnerability eric were you ever possessed no okay good i didn't know so. all right so because you were surrounded by love all right, oh, so, so uh, you know what he just said? I'm sorry, I, I, I got to interrupt. He said it was, it was his own demons yeah. that he was fighting. So not literal demons. His thoughts. His own demons were what he battled. Yeah, poor baby. Yeah. Um, well, are there people out there that are diagnosed with schizophrenia, borderline personality disorders, uh, you know, sociopaths, et cetera, that – really don't have those mental illnesses that are really suffering from possession. Okay. So he, he is, I mean, and how can you tell? Right. He says you can't exercise you can't, them. You can't tell. Yeah. He says you really can't tell because if they sizzle, um, when you throw yeah. holy water on them, that yes. is, that's your answer. Yeah. But, but he is saying that there are some people out there who believe themselves to be mentally ill who do have stuff coming from the spirit world and they think that they're crazy. 
Um, but he's like, there are people, there are absolutely people who are getting messages from the other side, seeing spirits from the other side, and they believe that they're mentally ill when really they're just connected to the other side and they don't quite understand it. Um, but yeah, he said it is, it's very hard to tell the difference um, between a possession and somebody who's having like a breakdown, like, like an, a, um, well, a psychotic episode. Well, how do you? Very hard what? to tell. So what did we do? Um, okay. Uh, he, he, he said, you have to ex explore all the options. You have to explore all the options. And now he said so many people just explore the medical. Um, oh. You have to be open to other options um, and think like outside this, this the work? box. Does exorcism work? Yeah, they, yes, they, yes, they can work. If they're done properly, yes, they can. Is and they always, have. Is it always attached to like the Catholic religion or are there other no, there are other non-denominational types of exorcism? Yeah, there's other exorcisms that work. Um, that's not just through the, through the Catholic religion. He said, because, you know, people do get possessed in areas where the Catholic religion isn't prominent. Right. Um, so there are, they have other ways of, of doing it. So what is it about an exorcism that works? Is it all about like yeah, prayer says, or what, what is it? Yeah, it's like, I, it, it, he's making me feel like um, prayer and um, like healing energy from the other people, like actually touching, physically touching. Um, I do feel that there's um, like, um, you know, almost rituals happening like, stuff like that's being drank and stuff that's being burned um oh. like a whole like a whole thing to create he said okay he said to create the um to create the space for the positive energy to come in and it's almost like he's making me feel like it's super focused that that um that positive energy has to be really really focused instead of being like all over the place it needs to be channeled very yeah, like a laser beam yes very specifically and maybe sage, a smudging with sage or yeah, yeah, but it, it, and things like that. We'll yeah, that, that yeah, but there's also other herbs. He's putting other other stuff in, like with the stuff with what's burning. I don't know. Palo um, San Santo. And like yeah, but like lavender and um, just yeah, a mixture. It's like a mixture of stuff that's that's burning. Well, it's probably more than one way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. And then Absolutely. Tibetan bells, you know, clearing the energy. Yeah, um, and he did say you do you do not have to be, um, like a professional. Oh at yeah. This. yeah. You know, uh, we have the capacity to clear that energy out. So how do we find out how to do it? Google how to. Yeah. DIY exercise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> DIY exercise. Check yeah. on the DIY channel. Yeah. He did. He did just um, say that with tr with a true exorcism, where somebody is truly possessed, uh, there needs to be he more than one person performing whatever's going on. Really, it, it works better if more than one person is involved. Why is that? Because energy flow from yeah, like a negative positive pole kind mm -hmm. of thing, or energy yeah, and just flows? pulling in more more energy. Um, it's like the that the group. You know, when you get a group together, oh, they're yeah. more you know the oh yeah sure it's like that so he said that's that's always the better way to do it and again he does say that this really is a true possession it is very rare yeah um, is it a chant you, you need to say okay so you clear all the energy with all these herbs and all that stuff then what do you do well while all this was going on you'd be praying um, with whatever, you know, whatever it is that your group of people would want to do and, you know, calling the light or God or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Um, intention, intention. It would be oh, about yeah. intention. Yeah, intention is important. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Uh, was this Annalise really given a choice by Mother Mary to be freed from demons or die while being possessed for the sins of humanity she yes she was she was given a choice yes oh wow yes yeah, she was given a choice oh gosh all right can animal spirits possess a human body 
Um, he, Bella, well, what, Bella can uh, what he, he just said is that they that would be more of an attach. They would attach oh. to you, not really possess, but attach ah, to you. That is definitely different. Yes, and they would always be a, I'm sure, benevolent yeah, reason. Yes, yeah, animals don't yes. have. Yeah, okay. There are no, no, no. animals, right? No, 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 animal not spirits. when. Right, right. Not when the animals, even here, animals, even when they act aggressively, it's not because they're evil. Yeah, well, except chimpanzees, they kill for fun. <laughs> so I don't know. Yes, yes. But for the most part, animals. For the most part. You know, I think they're yes, the only, I think, I might be wrong, that they're the only animal beside human beings uh, who do kill for sport. Kill I, for sport. I, I believe dolphins kill for sport, too. Oh, and I love dolphins. That's yeah. not good. Of course, they do gang yeah. rape, so that's not good. Yes, they do. Yes, they yeah. do. They're uh, little horny little beasts. Anyway, yeah. but I still, I still love them, okay? I can't help myself. Yes, it's, it is okay. It's okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, animals do not, uh, in, in the spirit world, do not have evil intentions. Okay, good. Now, is it true that only archangels, Jesus, Mother Mary, and God himself are able to cast out demons from a human? No, we no. just talked about we yeah. can exercise them ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Well, now see, it's that's a he said that's kind of a trick question because um, the people would be the humans would be kind of orchestrating it, but they would get help from the angels and God and stuff on the other side. So it's. Oh yeah. So I see. He so says, you, like Eric said, you can't just you know leave it be and hope God will take care of it. Yeah. Uh, you have to be actively involved in the human form, but yes, they would be involved. Yeah, um, of course. Good. All right. So why do you have to exercise, do exorcisms? Why can't you say, get the hell out of my body or that person's body? Uh, aren't they, well, don't they respond to that? Well, like, sometimes, sometimes their will is just stronger than that. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah. you know, with intention about stuff, you have to really, really be serious. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what Eric is making me feel is that the person who may be possessed uh, their will is very weak at that moment. Yes. Um, so they need the strength of others. Now, if they could maybe summon up the strength themselves to truly, but he says at that point, they're so confused and, and yeah. they're, they're so weak that they need the help of others to, to oh, kind sure. of boost their strength. He says like this, this type of thing, the exorcism boosts the person's strength who is feeling the possession and and it like they but they need a longer amount of time than just get out of here to boost okay. their strength back up to I guess kind of fight it. Okay. Uh, does one have to be vulnerable for these demons to come in and possess them? Seems like you would have yeah, to Yeah, he he was saying yeah, they, they would they would not go to somebody who's not uh, feeling vulnerable. Okay, good. Uh where can you look to for help if you think you're possessed and the Catholic church refuses to perform an exorcism? Well, I guess you do it yourself. Yeah. Or, I mean, with other you, people. Yes. Or you, yeah. I mean, I guess you could find other, you know, uh, spiritual people or religious people who might have some insight into this. Um, and he says, cause if it works, it works. It's who, who cares where, who cares yeah. kind of who helped you get rid of the possession? If exactly. it works, it works. Exactly. You just need to get rid of it. Okay. Now why do demons not like holy water? Or if you go like this, you know, what, what's the deal about holy water? This is water. Uh, the, it's, it has, well, it has an intent. The, that's exactly what it is. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry. Yep. No, it's, he said it's the intention um, into the holy water. The intention in it um, is what, is what does that. Um, like when I use the Eric board, the E board, uh, you have this, this prayer of intent, you know, uh, it's just found myself by a golden bubble of protection and blah, 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 blah. It, but I substitute that with the word apple. So I don't have to say that whole thing. I'm that lazy. Right. I'm yeah. that lazy. And, and so that's like holy water is a substitute for that long intent and in prayer, I guess. Yes. And he said, no, she's not lazy. She's efficient. There <laughs> yeah, we go. Efficient. I like that. I like it. <laughs> yes. Um, can one become possessed by using a Ouija board? So he's, uh, yes. 
He said that does open up a vulnerability. And that's how he keeps putting it is it opens up a vulnerability. If you play around with the dark forces. Yes. If if you don't, if you don't say, all right, only Eric or my spirit guys or whatever can come. Everybody not welcome here. Yes. All that kind of, yes. okay, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Well, he, what he's saying is like, um, yeah, if your intention when you play with a Ouija board is to connect to whoever wants to come through, then you open yourself up for vulnerability. But if you're, if you're doing like what you say is only, you know, uh, beings from the light or only, you know, beings that, that have good intentions, you know, all, all, all others know, that, then it's, you know, it would be okay. But yeah. yes, playing with a Ouija board, if you do not know what you're doing, he said that's definitely a way to kind of, and he said, really, that is like, um, would be, not that you can't get a possession that way, but more of the ones that like would attach. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Oh, uh, I see. He's saying that is, mo- that is more likely to be what happens as you get one that comes through that attaches to you. Oh. Can you be um, a, a, a attached to or possessed by alien entities? You know what? He, um, well, he is just actually making me feel like they don't need to do that. Why, um, Eric? Well, because of their technology and their knowledge not okay. that we can't connect to them because there are there are some of us who can but they don't need to kind of possess us okay um to get whatever information some you know a being that or would feeling, be feeling tangible yes. feeling, all that okay cool is there what can we do to protect ourselves from demon demons or demonic possession or attachment Okay, well, the big thing is, is don't open yourself up to that. Don't, don't toy with the darker energies and don't, you know, dabble in in the darker side of things. And he said also, you know, surround yourself with the, you know, the bright light and, and only allow, you know, positive energies to be able to connect to you um those are the type of things that keep you protected from that okay um and, and give you the strength but it, it it really is about not not messing in in those in yeah. those areas um, uh, otherwise is there anything you can uh, do like um well i guess clear the energy of your space with sage palo uh, uh palo santo santo uh smudging yes. and, and uh, tibetan bells and yeah burning what, salt you know, crystals and, yeah crystals this, crystals what yeah, crystal this, works the best for or so, uh, Okay. Off demons. So the darker crystals, the black, the black stones oh. tend to be protective. Oh. Um, so like black tourmaline, black jade, um, the, the onyxes, those tend to be good about protecting you against negativity. Hematite is a really good one. Ah. Um, clear quartz is an amplifier, so you can always add clear quartz to any of your stuff. With the black. Oh. Yeah, it will amplify the energy, um, and co- uh, copper is also an amplifier. So if you're somebody who feels like negative energies are, are with you, you might want to more wear something like that. Wear something with black tourmaline, maybe wrapped in copper um, with some clear quartz and actually carry the stones mm-hmm. on you. Um, if, it, you know, if you feel like it's where you live or where you work or something. Yeah, what if you move into a haunted house? What can you th- do there? Well, see, if it's a haunting yeah. where you truly have an earthbound spirit. Oh, is that what that is? That, oh, yeah, okay. that, there, there's, it's all, it's different because there can be residual energy mm. where you're, where you're still feeling the negativity yes. or whatever but, that happened there, but there's not necessarily an earthbound an entity. spirit. It's not an entity. I've got yes. it. But if you truly have an earthbound spirit, um, you that's something that you he said you need to um try to talk them into going into the light he said but they're so stubborn because they don't always believe that they're dead mm. um he said that's really really hard hey, and that was, uh, <laughs> mr Thun, you dead go go yeah. to the light okay yes there's no hell come on go yes uh, why do demons have such power to cause harm to humans well, because well, because humans are vulnerable. We we are vulnerable in these snowflakes. Times. 
Yes, we're we're just vulnerable. So yeah. that's that's why we, you know, we have bad days and we do destructive things to ourselves, and then we, you know, spiral down. So we're we're just vulnerable in this in this form. Our our soul is vulnerable in, in the human body. Well, what do they get out of harming us, though? Well, he said their kicks and their jollies is how he just kind of put it. It's fun. It's fun for them. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, how is it possible, or is it possible that more than one demon can possess a human body? Uh, yes. He, he just said yes. Okay. How many demons are there? Oh, he, a lot. <laughs> like just, all of a sudden I'm just, no, it doesn't feel like millions, but it feels like quite a bit. Quite like a bit. What? How, how many des I mean, how many figures? Um, uh, four figures, five figures, no, six figures. No, 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 no. I, I feel like I have hundreds. Oh, okay. Um, I feel like, like oh, I have that's not so bad. Okay, good. Um, is this this thing as the Antichrist? Uh, and if so, what is it? And is it on Earth now? Oh, okay. This is interesting. It's the the antichrist how how eric is making me feel about that is it's not a physical thing it, it's not oh. like um and it's not like a being like god or the angels or a spirit it's more of a way of thinking he said oh it's the antichrist is more of a way of thinking and what is that way of thinking eric um well you know it would be um like thinking that you know against but it's not even just against God. It's like, um, like the more negative, the more, okay. He keeps saying like what we would consider like devil worshiping. Oh, okay. Um, like that sort of a mentality is, is the antichrist, but it's not like a specific thing. Okay. It's like a thought. All right. So it's not a specific evil spirit, for example. No, that's, that's not how he's making me feel at all. It's like, um, you know, Thoughts are powerful things. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, that's how more how it feels to me. Okay. Uh, was Lucifer really an angel cast out of heaven? Yes. Okay. Why was he cast out? Um, okay. Again, he's making me feel like back to the good and evil. We need both. Okay. We, we need good and evil. Okay. Um, it's, it's why we come here. He said it's why we come here to earth. Um, because that is where good and evil happens there. Okay. Um, on the other side, good and evil doesn't happen on the other side. Good and evil happens here. Okay. Um, and if there were no um, beings to create evil, then there would be no contrast. Yeah, that's true. Uh, why do some demons attach to some houses and not others? Okay, that's... Um, this is like the earthbound spirits to me. Yeah, that that's a yeah, it's a more earthbound and it's it is not about the house specifically, it's about the land. Mm -hmm. So if you have a haunted house and you tear the house down and build another house, a brand new house, you're still gonna have a haunted Whoa. house. Ooh. Okay. Because they maybe it's, lived there before. It's, and... Yes, it's a it, they it, it attaches to the land. Oh, interesting. Um, and and it's just Indian burial grounds. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, and he said it really is just, it's about the land. So if you could live right next door to a haunted house and you don't have any um, issues at your house because the ghost stays there, so to speak. Okay, well, what can you do to the land to make sure that it's yeah. cleansed? You would, need, you, you would need somebody professional who knows how to get them to cross over. And, okay. and it's interesting because that is also... Uh, he says there are some earthbound spirits who are earthbound because it is part of their plan. Oh, their contract. Okay. Yes. Um, but he is, okay. So he is making me feel like if God said that all the earthbound spirits would come back, they could, he could, he could do that. He could. Oh, okay. Yeah. It. So it's kind it's kind of like, you know, we're just experiencing. And, and he said, you know, it's not all bad because when people see a ghost, um, it does open their mind to the fact that there is something beyond here. So yeah. it is kind of helpful to have some. Yeah, of course, they had to, like, invest in a lifetime supply of pins. 
This is yeah. going to wet themselves all the time. But yeah. Right, so you know how some people with uh, schizophrenia, one of the things is auditory hallucinations. I'm just yeah. wondering how many people are diagnosed with uh, schizophrenia who are really just channeling. Yeah, and and so he is saying that that does happen. Um, I mean, that, some that of our does... mental institutions. I I just yes. talked to Grandma Moses, and oh God, put her in the funny farm. You know, that's yeah. Of... Well, and he, what he's saying is that the, the people who that happens to, it's because also they don't understand what's happening, and they think they're crazy. Yeah. Um, they think they're crazy, and and he is saying like with schizophrenia, yeah. um, in particular, that people who truly are schizophrenic. He said still some of what they get is actually coming from the other side. Yeah. Not all of it. Some of it is hallucinations and, and this kind of stuff. Yeah. But, um, but he said some of it is uh, like, it's like a bit of both. Yeah. Cause they're straddling both yes. sides from yes. what Eric told me in the past. What about multiple personality disorder? Okay. Uh, that, well, he said that's a real thing. <laughs> that is a real thing that can be, you know, a mental illness. Um, and he said that is usually, oh, that's interesting. Uh, okay. Oftentimes that is, um, like from trauma, uh, where there's like a, 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 psych, a psychotic break, but he said sometimes people have that and it's, it's past lives of theirs. Oh, that are that through. Yep. Oh, wow. Yes. Can it, can it be other souls? Like somebody told me that, uh, well, Eric, tell me that uh, Lucas is part Lucas, but he also has a little bit of the baby that I lost, uh, Seth, in him, that he occupies space in there. Too, a, little, a little bit, because he yeah, wants to that, observe what Lucas, basically his life. Yeah, so uh, it, it can be, it can be other souls, um, but he, he is making me feel like more often it's either an illness or okay. past lives leading through. Like that's like kind of more common what happens. So you think past life regression would help cure some cases of multiple yeah, he said it, could, it could be very helpful uh, for, for, for some of them. But then he, he is also making me feel like once that happens, whichever way, whether it's um, trauma or past lives, he says kind of like once it starts happening, it, it, it's hard to stop it. It is how he's putting it because it like opens up that path. Oh, I see. What about bipolar disease? Uh, he, he said mental illness. It's pretty much mental illness. Mental okay. illness. Um, how can you tell the difference between, say, schizophrenia and spirit possession, whether negative or positive? It's, it, it's just like um, – it's very difficult. He said it's very difficult. And what you, the best thing to do would be to try all kinds of options oh. um, to, to help to see uh, what helps and what works and what doesn't. Um, but he said, you know, so few people here think to look outside of what they're trying. So if you're, if you're going to the doctors and getting your medication, you tend to stick with that. Or do you know what I'm saying? He, like he's saying like, you do this. And if this doesn't work, you try a different medicine, um, but you don't necessarily think, oh, maybe I should see about an exorcism or. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Right. You no. Know? Right. Yeah. Like really. you go for their kind of, he's like, they're kind of at different ends and most people don't think about the whole spectrum of what you I think. know. I know. That's yes. true. Uh, okay. Th so there's a show that I've heard of too, the dead files. Uh, and this person wants to know, Eric, this is from other blog members. Uh, Eric's take on that show. Amy Allen is always seeing really weird things, claiming the entities can kill or make sick the people living in the home. She always has some unique clearing remedies that are tailored to the situation. Is it really that com complicated? No, he said they can't kill you. Oh, they demons can't. cannot kill you? But they can they make can't. you sick, probably, right? Yeah, he said they can't kill you. And, and it's like, um, I... I what she, what she's doing is like um he said it's more about earthbound spirits okay it's more about earthbound spirits and he says they can't they can't kill you earthbound spirits oh, can't kill you but uh, demons can't kill you either um he said he said they can drive you mad so can you, they, they could probably drive you to kill yourself yes 
Oh, okay. Uh, do and or can demons take possession of small children? If so, how can we tell? And sometimes I've thought my kids were possessed by demons. But yeah. Anyway. And if so, how can we tell? And once confirmed, how can they be removed? Okay, so truly how Eric's making me feel here is that children are protected. Oh. Um, children, the children are protected because... Um, because they already come in with so much vulnerability that he says they're protected and he is showing me small children. Yeah. Um, so maybe not so much with teenagers, but yeah. small children, he said they're protected because they come in with too much vulnerability yeah. that they need to be protected right. in this way. Um, I, I don't necessarily feel as though he's applying that to teenagers, but, um, younger children, there's, there's just too much protection around them for this to happen. Okay. So, uh, teenagers, I mean, how can you tell if it's a demon possession? He's, he's, yeah, he's like, you can't, because teenagers are, you know, such shitheads anyways. He oh, just said. oh. Uh, he said oh he's, he's like, he's, yeah, he's being, he's just being funny. Um, but no, what he's, what he's saying is that, um, you know, like teenagers have their, you know, the, their issues anyways. And he says, you know, if you're, if your teenagers just doing normal teenage stuff, even if it's, you know, you know, partying and, and talking back and, you know, running off and stuff, that does not mean that they're possessed. Um, and he, he's, um, okay. So he's saying one of the ways that you would know is a drastic change ah. in their personality. Um, and also I, he is making me feel like a physical, there would be a physical, oh. um, look like they would look very, very tired. You know, um, he said, that's harder to tell with adults because adults always look tired. He said, I know, um, it's true um I and, not. and I, like, he's also making me feel like there would be physical sickness, physical, okay. physical sickness. Oh. Um, and again, he does want to reiterate is this true possessions are, are very rare good Thank rare God. can dark energies be summoned oh yes okay mm -hmm. okay <laughs> bye uh how do demons pick their victims other than other than the fact that they're vulnerable depressed or alcoholics or heroin addicts that's or that's how they do it. I, that's he just, much it, huh? yeah, he just sort sort of showed me them kind of wandering around till they were drawn to somebody, basically. Okay. Are there uh, do different types of demons have different passions? Yes. Okay, like for example. Uh, like well, like certain ones would be drawn to people who are alcoholics, um, f and maybe because they liked to drink or they like the <laughs> the. Oh. Um, the, you know the drugs or something so yes uh -huh. they would be drawn to certain to certain um types but of they're like the high from heroin yep uh, what yep. do they get out of, what do they yep. get out of uh, people who are depressed um the, the uh the high of causing misery he just said that oh. they, they like to cause the misery oh my gosh okay uh okay what is the greatest damage a demon can do of course they can't kill you the, uh can they get you to they can get you to kill yourself yeah, can they get you to kill somebody else um uh, yeah wow yeah he, yeah he said yes and they can get you to become no, ill obviously he, okay so he did say yes but he said you know he, like they would okay so what eric is saying is that they would choose somebody who would not be opposed to that anyways Oh, um, like they wouldn't just choose somebody who would never, never do this. They would choose somebody that if put the right propensity. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Now you said that possession sometimes is part of a pre-birth plan. What is the lesson that comes from something like that? Okay. So uh, what it, it's, it's almost more like it's, um, to, to show others that it's possible um, to, to, te to teach the people around that, oh, yeah. that it can happen. Um, but he said it could also be uh, for the person to find their strength to fight this oh, um, yeah. and that kind of thing. But, but he said, you know, just, just like we, we need to see the good and, and the light of the other side. He, again, he's like, there, 
we also need contrast. To use- yeah, you yeah. have to in order to appreciate the good even yes. more. Yeah, have to know the the negative. Right. Uh, can you name a, a few famous people who have been possessed, which has caused them to commit crimes against their free will? I I am not getting anything. Um, you probably don't want them. I mean, some serial killers, maybe. Oh yes, actually, that's so funny because I was seeing like the Son of Sam earlier. Oh, okay. Um, when we were talking about the murdering, I he kept showing me the Son of Sam. Oh, okay. um, but I, yeah. Um, so yes, serial killers. He said not all of them. Yeah. Um, but um, for whatever reason, the Son of Sam. Um, it, yeah. Oh, so you, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, curious about shadow people. I've seen them quite often after using tarot and Ouija boards as a kid. Are they evil? We talked about that. Yeah, I don't. What I feel this person is asking about shadow people. No, I, I, it's not. It's guides, or you just you've opened yeah. that third eye up to the other side. That's not necessarily evil or bad. Okay. Scary, yes. Yeah, <laughs> kind of creepy. Uh, yeah. Can a person uh, be a demon disguised as a human? Okay, so, all right, how um, Eric is putting this is like, um, yes, but not for an entire life. Um, Like angels can pop in and take on a human form for a short period of time. Okay. Um, But an angel does not come into a life like we do from birth all the way through, but an angel can pop in and take human form for a brief amount of time and a demon can as well. Interesting. Um, How brief are we just, talking about? Uh, I really, it feels very quick. I don't even feel like I have a whole day here. I feel oh, like, okay, okay. Um, yeah. So, like when you, you know, he's showing me like um, when there's an accident scene and there's like that person who was on the scene and then they just disappear. Oh, um, yeah. Like that type of a cool. thing is how yes. angels can pop in and he said demons can do the same thing and i have to be honest with you he is making me feel like um like angels and demons they're not like they're not the same but they're they're they do feel similar the, similar the, of, the opposite sides of the same coin yes, yeah yes, yes. I, I can see that i could totally see that uh okay this person says they experience sleep paralysis and uh, she or he is wondering if demons were involved in any way. Okay. Um, so what, what that is, there's a, there's a couple of different things that that can be. Uh, it's um, especially the, when you can't breathe, when you're having mm. the paralysis with the breathing, mm. um, that is an energy that's like on you. Um, not necessarily a demon, but more of a, of a negative energy that's attached to you. Okay. Um, but for whatever reason, Eric is making me feel very clearly like that would be involved with the breathing feeling very strange too. Um, but he said sometimes people will have the sleep paralysis where they don't have the breathing problem and they can see and they can hear, but they just can't move or speak. Right. Um, he's saying what that is, is when your soul has kind of astral traveled Uh and you've woken up as your soul and your body are reconnecting and it's not like the transition isn't fully done. Oh yeah. I know Um, that. That is so true. All right. Can can, uh, demons present as as our uh, deceased loved ones? No, no, uh, no. He he's saying that 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 does not happen because um, because the deceased loved ones um, sort of have more strength mm. than to. I, I I don't. I it's that's very interesting. So no, um, he said you would not mistake a demon or a negative entity for a deceased loved one because when the deceased loved ones come you just know it's them and and it doesn't usually feel scary unless you see them he said unless you see them he said in human form you guys get so scared when you see something i know <laughs> um, but when the physical when you feel the energy around you just in the physical not necessarily the visual he said you'll always know that it's your loved ones and not something evil and to be afraid of but he said you can mistake your loved one that you're seeing as something evil because it just scares you guys. Oh yeah. Which he actually kind of is laughing at. He thinks it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Well, can, yeah. can, can, uh, 
uh, can demons impersonate somebody that a medium is channeling? For example, have there ever been demons, Eric, that have said, hey, I'm Eric Medjus and been channeled by a medium? Okay, so he's saying for him in particular, no. Okay. Um, that has not happened. But what he is saying is that like, if a medium doesn't like for me in particular and i'm now i'm talking as jennifer i i have always just put a protection up i do not let negative in i you know i just don't so i know everything yeah. that comes to me um and and for the catholics out there this would be considered discernment of spirit yes um, i can just tell the difference and i do yeah. not allow negative in however if you have a medium who does not do that because there are mediums that will let whatever come in yes then then negative energies and, and entities and stuff can be channeled and they could probably uh, you know uh, say I hey, am Archangel Michael and things like that yes, right? and give misinformation mm. and, and if the if the medium doesn't know what they're dealing with then yes they could be being fed misinformation all right. That is awesome. I don't have any more questions. Eric, thank you so much. I love you. Jennifer, we got some cool stuff coming up. First of all, uh, people can c connect with you at psychic medium, Jennifer Doran.com. And I'll put that here and uh, tell us about the channeling Eric event that's coming up in October. Yes. So um, it's a three day event in October. It'll be Jamin Olivencia and myself um, hosting uh, it should be a really good time. It, it'll be, um, let's see what Friday night, all day Saturday, and then a little bit of a wrap up on Sunday. Do you know the dates? I didn't get the, I didn't get the new dates. Um, I know the, the Sunday, the 21st is the last day. Okay. So, so I, it's uh, 19th through the 21st because yes. we're going to have it in August, but it's too hot here. In Houston. Yeah. Yeah. It's I know some too much. So the tickets are already selling. So there is, um, but there's only uh, limited space because it's yeah, in my house. Space. It's in Eric's home, you know, a, a place, you know, his, uh, where yeah. he grew up. So, uh, it's a very yeah. special thing. And, and, uh, the last time we had this, people thought it was just so life changing. So, uh, you know, register as soon as you can, because again, we, we can't have everybody come to my house. So, yeah. All yeah. right. Anything else you want to share, Jennifer? Just thank you. And, uh, Eric says he loves you. And, um, he, he said, uh, oh gosh, he said, um, he'll, uh, see you, see you out. He'll see you outside. And he's talking about the closet. Um, like see, being in the closet i don't know what not in a not in like a homosexual a gay gay way, right, way, right, right, right. like like i actually feel as though you're okay. going to see him in the closet that's Ooh, so that'd funny be cool. yes you got any messages for uh your little bro lucas uh yeah he said um he said you got this um take a deep breath and um just keep going just keep right. plugging away Oh, I know exactly what that is. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.